Welcome to Harrogate District Hospital Knee Replacement Enhanced Recovery Programme. This information has been put together by the therapy team to ensure you know how to look after your new knee joint. It is important that you watch this film, perhaps with a friend or relative, to ensure you understand the changes that you may have to make to your home life, exercise regime after the operation. It will be hard work and it may be painful, but by doing the exercises you can ensure a good result. By following this advice and working with the therapy team whilst on the ward, you increase the chance of having a successful outcome following your surgery. Why have a knee replacement? A knee replacement is usually undertaken when there is arthritis in the joint, causing pain and restricted mobility. The worn ends of the bone are removed and replaced with metal implants. The replacement will never be as good as a normal knee joint, but it will alleviate pain and allow you greater function. Pre-admission. Preparing yourself for your new joint. It is very important that you are physically well enough for your surgery. Fitness is something that you can start to work on today. Start doing the exercises that you will be shown later in this film. But even short walks outside and walking a dog are excellent forms of exercise. You should try to quit smoking as this can delay healing and try to keep your weight close to that recommended for your height. This will avoid unnecessary complications. Get used to eating a healthy diet as this will also aid recovery. Medical pre-assessment. Prior to admission, you will be required to attend the pre-assessment and admissions unit for a thorough medical checkup, which may include a blood test, ECG, and a routine MRSA screen. If the nurse picks up any signs of infection, such as urine, chest, dental, and foot conditions, these must be treated before surgery, so please consult your GP. Preparing your home. Plan ahead and think about the support you might need when you return home, usually around two to three days after surgery. Get used to seeing possible hazards in the home, such as loose carpets, rugs and wires, and if possible, remove them. Place a table next to where you will normally sit. Good heating and lighting is important. A sturdy banister is advisable on the stairs. Rearrange the cupboards in the kitchen so that the most frequently used items are easily within reach. Ensure that everything is in good working order and to hand. If you've been able to manage getting up and down from your furniture easily before the operation, then you should manage equally well after, and you shouldn't need to make any alterations. However, if you do need to make any changes to your home, do so before you come into hospital. Don't leave these changes to the last minute. Things to bring into hospital with you. Pack a small case. A list of the things you may need is in your information book. Shoes, slippers or sandals must have a strap or enclosed heel so that they do not easily slip off your foot. Older, loose-fitting footwear may be a benefit as it is likely that your feet will swell. It is important that the wound is easily visible. So gentlemen, you need to bring shorts and ladies a skirt, dress or shorts. Oh, don't forget your toiletries, towel and medication, plus the walking sticks and your information book. Day of admission. This could either be the day before or the day of the surgery. You'll be advised which. You are asked to report to either the ward directly or to the pre-admissions and assessment unit. A nurse will escort you to the theatre. We try to encourage patients to walk to the theatre if they're able to. Returning to the ward from theatre. You will return to the ward after a couple of hours, escorted by a nurse. You may require oxygen for a short time. This is given by a nasal cannula. You may have a drain leading from the side of your wound. 
In the first few hours after you arrive on the ward, the nurses will do regular checks of your blood pressure, blood oxygen levels, temperature and pulse. You will have Floatron stockings wrapped around the lower half of each of your legs. There is an air pump attached to the bed which inflates and deflates the stockings, squeezing the calf muscles alternately and reducing the risk of a deep vein thrombosis. These Floatrons will remain on your legs whilst you are on the ward. To aid circulation, you can also move your feet up and down or in a circle regularly. Your knee will hurt and pain management is very important. You will be regularly asked to score your pain using a score of 0 to 10, where 0 is no pain and 10 is the most pain. You will be prescribed analgesia, but if you do not feel that it is controlling your pain enough, then speak to your nurse immediately so that they can consult a doctor and have the dose altered or try a different medication. Continue to take the painkillers on a regular basis because if you're in pain, you will not want to exercise or walk and you won't make the best opportunity of your time on the ward. Getting out of bed. After a couple of hours, the sensation in your leg will have returned and your pain should be under control. Once you're able to show staff that you can control your muscles, they will help you out of bed to use the commode or sit on your chair. Turn your bottom and bring your feet gently down to the floor. Try not to hold your legs stiff. Just allow the weight of your leg to bend naturally. Sit there for a second. Put your feet into your slippers. You're allowed to reach down. To stand up, push your hands on the mattress and take weight through your strong, your unoperated leg. Take hold of the Zimmer frame and stand up straight. Using the Zimmer frame, you'd be able to turn to sit into the chair. Move the Zimmer frame forward. Take your operated leg part way into the frame and move your unoperated leg forwards to meet it. Step around with small steps, trying to keep your knee as straight as you can. For stepping backwards, take your unoperated leg back first, followed by your operated leg and the Zimmer frame. To sit down, Slide your operated leg forwards just a little. This will mean that your knee will not need to bend so much. Feel for the chair arms and gently lower yourself to the seat. Bed exercises. Each day you will be expected to get washed and dressed and to do your exercises three times a day. The physiotherapist will supervise you doing your exercises once a day, but you are expected to do them twice more by yourself. After surgery, the exercises will be more difficult, so by practicing them now, you will become familiar with them and start to strengthen the muscles around the knee. Static quads exercises. With your legs straight and your toes pointing to the ceiling, Tighten your thigh muscle, hold it for five seconds and relax. Repeat ten times. Knee extension exercises. It is essential for walking that you get your knee fully straight. To do this, place a rolled up towel under your heel. Gravity will help the knee to sink down. Hold for two minutes. Repeat ten times. In a range quads exercise. Place a rolled up bath towel under your knee and lift your foot up to straighten your knee. Lower your leg slowly. You need to repeat each exercise ten times. Straight leg raise exercise. Tighten your thigh muscle 
and lift your whole leg approximately 12 inches off the bed. Lower slowly. Repeat 10 times. Knee flexion exercises. Place a plastic bag under your heel and then slide your foot towards you to bend your knee as far as you can. Gently slide it back down onto the bed. Another good way to get your knee bending is to draw your foot underneath you when you are sat in the chair. You will need to repeat each exercise 10 times. You can refer to these exercises either in your booklet or on your computer by going to YouTube and typing in Harrogate Hospital Knee Exercises. Swelling and some numbness around the knee is normal and may take three to six months to settle. It may also feel warmer than the other knee. To ease the swelling, you will be given a cryo cuff. The cryo cuff is worn half an hour on, then half an hour off, all through the day. This will be your responsibility. When you leave the hospital, take the cryo cuff home with you, full of water. This can then be chilled in the fridge. Walking. The physiotherapist will help you to progress from the Zimmer frame to walking sticks. When walking with the Zimmer frame, first of all, put the Zimmer frame forward. Step halfway into the Zimmer frame with your operated leg and then bring your unoperated leg up to meet it. When walking with the sticks, first of all, put your sticks forward together. Imagine an invisible line between your sticks. Take your operated foot to that line and then bring your unoperated foot up to meet it. As your muscles become stronger, you'll be able to progress your walking, first of all putting your sticks forward, stepping forward with your operated leg, and then stepping through with your unoperated leg. As your confidence grows, you'll be able to move your opposite arm and opposite leg together in a really normal walking pattern. Once comfortable on sticks, you will practice stairs. If you have a banister rail, use it. Make a T-shape with your sticks. Step up first with your good leg, then bring your operated knee leg up onto the same step, then bring up your sticks last. To go down the stairs, place your stick down onto the first step, then step down with your operated leg, followed by your unoperated good leg. If you have no banister rail, follow the same sequence, but use two sticks. If you have to carry things up and down the stairs, perhaps use a small rucksack. The occupational therapist will check that you are able to get on and off the toilet, bed and chair. Getting on and off the toilet. Step back so that you can feel the toilet behind the back of your legs. Slide your operated leg forwards and with both hands on the seat of the toilet, gently lower yourself. To stand, push from the toilet seat with your unoperated good leg and as you stand, bring your operated leg back underneath you. Getting on and off the bed. To get onto the bed, sit on the edge and gently ease yourself back across the mattress with your hands until your legs are well onto the bed. Move your legs around so that you are in the correct position. To get off the bed, do the reverse. Bathing and showering. You must not get the wound wet until it is healed, so initially you will need to strip wash. 
You're allowed to use a cubicle shower as soon as the wound is dry and the dressing over the wound has been removed, usually around two weeks after your surgery. It may take several weeks longer to develop the confidence to access a bath or overbath shower. Washing your hair. You can wash your hair standing at the basin or sink. Stand with your feet slightly apart, bending forwards gently at the knee, put your head over the basin or sink and use a jug or shower attachment. Foot care. You may return to cutting your own toenails and washing your feet as soon as you wish. But if you still feel uneasy about bending this far, either ask for help, use long-handled scissors, or make an appointment with a chiropodist. Kneeling down. Kneeling on the replacement knee will be uncomfortable, so the safest way to kneel is to do a single-legged kneel, where you kneel on the knee of the unoperated side only. If you need to kneel on both knees, make sure you kneel on a soft pad to protect the joint. For those patients living alone, an assessment in the kitchen will be undertaken. Think about where you eat your meals. You won't be able to carry anything when you have two walking sticks. Visiting times. Due to the number of patients on the ward, some people will have therapy treatment during visiting hours, which are 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. But unfortunately, this is unavoidable. Returning home. We recommend a daily short walk, but take care if it is slippery underfoot. You will soon learn how far you can go, but don't overexert yourself. It is most important that in order to keep your swelling down, your operated leg is raised above the level of your chest, ideally for 45 minutes, three times a day. Rest for at least an hour a day on the bed, as rest is most important for wound healing. Don't sit for long periods, as your knee could stiffen up. Get out of the chair and walk around the room at least once an hour. Continue to do your exercises three times a day for the first six weeks after your surgery. You can refer to these exercises either in your booklet or on your computer by going to YouTube and typing in Harrogate Hospital Knee Exercises. Outpatient Physiotherapy All patients will be referred for outpatient therapy. We are only able to arrange physiotherapy appointments at Yeadon, Weatherby, Ripon, and Harrogate. Your consultant will advise when to return to work or recommence your hobbies. This is dependent on the type of work and hobbies that you have. You can return to swimming once your wound is dry, but it often takes eight weeks to have the confidence to walk along the poolside. You should not fly for at least six weeks after surgery, and then only for a short haul flight of up to four hours. You must wait three months before a long haul flight. This is because of the increased risk of a blood clot in your deep veins. Sexual relations can recommence after six weeks. We recommend that the person with the joint replacement lies flat on the bed with the partner on top. Getting into the car. To get into the car, Ask your driver to park sensibly away from the curb and put the passenger seat as far back as possible. Step up to the car and turn so that you can sit down onto the seat. Swing your legs into the footwell. You are not allowed to drive until six weeks after surgery or advised by your consultant. Having a knee replacement is hard work. Although we're here to help, the hard work is yours.